Hello everyone, this is Ashish. Welcome back to Talk 4712. Today I'm going to talk about some of the essential things about the notification. And don't worry, I'm not just going to read out the notification from the PDF. I'm sure that a lot of other people must have done that. You must have watched their videos. Some of you must have read it yourself. But I'm going to explain some of the things that might not be that much clear to you. I think that this is once in a lifetime kind of video where I'm going to clarify all the things in the notification that will be helpful to a lot of you guys. I know that for a lot of people it is kind of obvious because that's where I started my YouTube channel. Like I was once selected in BARC way back in 2017 and since it has been four years a lot of you guys might not be knowing. I wasn't only selected, I joined. I joined as a trainee scientific officer one year training in nuclear science and engineering. I graduated as well, got the degree as well, joined as well as a scientific officer C in Department of Atomic Energy and re then resigned in two months because I got selected in Indian Space Research Organization. But what my point is, is that me being in such a situation where I have a following and I have the experience of being outside preparing for it, being inside and getting out of the organization, I should be sharing some of the information over here, which a lot of students might be asking questions. So I will not be wasting a single second of yours. Don't worry. I'm only going to get to the point, only the important things. I'm also going to leave the timestamps so that you can skip the part, which is kind of obvious to you. And if you want to watch the video version, sure, go ahead. I'll be putting the screen of whatever is going through in front of me. And if you don't, the audio version will also work for you so that you can do something productive like working out or studying or doing something which makes sense. All right, which is productive while listening to the information, which is also something that might be important. I'm honestly surprised that I never went through it. <laughs> I went inside and outside the department, but I never actually went through the notification properly. And before making a two month strategy, I thought that I should go through it because I should be having proper information and I should be knowing what questions you are asking. So I said that I'm going to read anyways, why not just record it as well? So that's what I'm going to do. So without wasting time, let's go ahead. I know my hair might be a little bit out of the place today because I just washed it and it's difficult to control but bear with me just like I'm bearing with my hair it will take time for it to get longer now first of all this is department of atomic energy this is something that a lot of people do not care to understand that it is not Baba Atomic Research Center BARC comes under department of atomic energy BARC is just an organization inside DA but yes it is very important to understand that it is responsible for organizing this examination and organizing the interviews and also organizing the one year training school that is going to go on. So this is OCES and DGFS and this is kind of the biggest confusion amongst all of the aspirants and candidates what is the difference between OCES and DGFS. So basically understand that both are kind of the same but DGFS is going to do MTech through some IITs or some other institute that is recognized by Department of Atomic Energy. So OCS will be the majority, DGFS will be like one or two. So if you have very good GATE score, then what happens is that you take an admission to some MTech, good, good college like IITs, ISC, and then you can join BARC. But here's the thing, the two years you'll be doing MTech during that you will be having kind of like the contact with department of atomic energy they will be paying you stipend instead of the stipend paid by iits or whatever college you have joined but after your mtech is over then you'll be coming back to department of atomic energy joining the training school just for four months and then completing your degree in nuclear science and engineering and also you have a degree in mtech now and then you'll be joining the Department of Atomic Energy. So since DGFS people are very less in number, I'm pretty sure that you'll be getting some good department only. OCS, what happens is that you directly join the BARC training school, one year training in that instead of just four months of DGFS. One year training in nuclear science and engineering, majorly three semesters, and then the last semester will be of project. And then what happens is that based on the ranking of your training school, you will be choosing the placement. So let us say that 12 people graduate in one year, then 12 vacancy from that particular branch. So 12 from, let us say mechanical engineering, if 10 graduated from chemistry, then 10 vacancies from there. And you will be competing amongst your department or branch itself. And whoever will be the topper will be having, let us say 12 
places that that person can pick up on the second person will be having 11 because one is gone for the topper so that is how it goes so it is kind of like a competition going on inside as well in the one year of training okay so i think that it is pretty clear what is the difference between oces and dgfs it is must to have a very good rank in gate examination for dgfs all right let's go forward all right now this might be a little bit confusing to some of you guys list of eligible disciplines and orientation of the training program at each of the training schools so that is something that a lot of you guys don't know as well that there is not only one single training school in BARC Mumbai there are multiple training schools earlier there were four but now the RRCAT one is almost closed the year that I was over there even NFC Hyderabad training school was closed but then it reopened so there's one BARC Mumbai the second one is NFC Hyderabad training school and the third one is IG Kar Kalpakkam training school so these are three training schools so you getting selected does not mean that you are only going to get to Mumbai how they separate I don't know properly some will say that it is based on the score of your interview but it's not like very clear yes but I know that your score will be the highest scores will be in BRC Mumbai I think the second highest will be in NFC Hyderabad and the third highest will be in Kalpakkam but also there's one form that you fill on the day of the interview which will be asking you for the preference like whether NFC Hyderabad is your first preference so let us say your first preference is Kalpakkam you belong to Tamil Nadu maybe living close to Pondicherry then what happens is that your first preference will be that so even if you are the topper then you will be getting that only so keep, keep your take your preferences very seriously all right so wherever and the different training school will be having their own ranking and also the placements differ from different training schools so in NFC Hyderabad most of the vacancies will be for NFC Hyderabad and uh, for industrial works like heavy water production and all and for example for IG Kar Kalpakkam most of the placement will be for second stage reactors and fast breeder reactors and for BARC Mumbai most will be for first stage reactors and BARC Mumbai so it does matter matters a lot all right next let us get into where you can be posted so they will never actually disclose exactly what are the vacancies of that year until you actually finish your third semester so after the third semester what will be the final ranking just before your project that will be given okay now this is the list of ranking and this is where you'll be standing and these are the vacancies these years so basically you'll be studying blindly for eight to ten months but that is how it goes but you will be want beforehand that you can be posted anywhere so number one being BARC Mumbai and there's a star over here I think the reason for the star will be mentioned somewhere but I'm guessing that BARC Mumbai is not having all the centers in Mumbai only so there are some BARC centers in Kalpakkam also so that might also happen for example over here NFC is also written so NFC is not having all the centers in Hyderabad only that is why there is a star and NFC might be having centers in other places as well okay Indra Gandhi Center of Atomic Energy sorry Atomic Research that is IG car that is in Kalpakkam Raja Raman Center of Atomic Technology that is sorry Advanced Technology and that is RRCAT Indoor very highly demanded center very rarely the vacancies comes mostly the toppers take it away variable energy cyclotron center VECC that is in Kolkata heavy water board the headquarter is in Mumbai and that is exactly where I was at this is where I reported for my joining and all as scientific officer see but there are plants throughout throughout the country for example, there's a plant in Tutigurin, there's a plant in Manuguru, there's a plant in Kota, there's a plant in Odisha as well. Some are functional, some are not. There's a plant in Thal, that is in Alibag. So there are multiple centers and you can be posted anywhere. And the vacancies, you don't really know. Finally, it will be coming up. Uh, but a lot of you guys will be thinking, that, oh, what happens now if I want BARC Mumbai? That is the question, that is the general question. So. If you're a topper, you can be pretty much sure that you will be getting BARC Mumbai because there will be at least one to two vacancies from BARC. The worst I've seen is that only one vacancy in B of BARC Mumbai back in 2000 and yeah, 2017 pass outs. One year senior of ours in IGK Kalpakkam, only one vacancy from BARC Mumbai. Sometimes it happens because that place 
is a center small center and everyone wants to be over there depends on the vacancies and vacancies is a vacancies are very very complicated it depends on how many people got promoted from c to d and then how many people actually got uh, retired and all so it is a complicated thing and you can never predict that one okay nfc that is nuclear fuel complex is primarily in hyderabad it's kind of an industrial place production of nuclear fuel rods it is responsible for that uh, board of radiation and isotope technology brit mumbai that also has centers throughout the country and i don't really know a lot about that but what i know is that engineers generally don't get posted over here it is generally for physics people all right and then comes nuclear power corporation of india npcl so npcl has its own recruitment going on as well but they do take from scientific offices as well and regularly a lot of people get posted over there so you can basically switch from a central government organization to a public sector undertaking so some people do prefer that because the salary will be higher and the work will be much more regularized yeah it's kind of far away from research but it is something that is preferable by a lot of people now bhartiya nabhikya vidyut and vidyut nigam limited bhavani basically so i'm sure that a lot of you guys might not be knowing about this so npcl is responsible for power generation from the first stage reactors bhavani in a similar case is responsible for power generation through second stage reactors the fast feeder reactors now it is not operational right now because the fast feeder reactors itself is not functional yet but when it will be it is kind of like a brother of npcil which is going to take care of power production so it is also like a psu that is why you see over here ltd same as npcil ltd okay atomic mineral let us just go to the amd hyderabad honestly speaking i don't know much about that you can do your research ucl jadugura it is in jharkhand it is basically for mining of uranium i've not seen any vacancies from this place so far at least for the engineers or that is training scientific officers but you never know when the vacancies comes and uh, let us go forward then yeah, dcs and em i think that it is for basically construction and maintenance and people who get posted over here for mumbai they are going to get posted in headquarter itself a lot of people will just prefer it just for the mumbai placement but it is far away from research correct me if i'm wrong but i'm pretty sure that this is construction and maintenance only basically taking care of the quarters and roads and all those things yeah so maintenance and all and not only the maintenance not the maintenance of reactors and all basically maintenance of living and roads logistics and all that okay great so now we are pretty clear about the various postings and like i said the posting can be from any place vacancies can be from any place and you will be choosing from a very small subset of these vacancies and mostly there's a vacancy from nfc hyderabad mostly there's a vacancy from brc mumbai mostly there's a vacancy from ig kalpakkam and mostly there's a vacancy from heavy water board for engineers for science students also it is very much similar but sometimes different vacancies might just pop out and you can't say anything because you have already been told that you can be placed from any one of these okay so that is a part of uh, of bic that a lot of people are not aware of i've seen a lot of videos they are just in 95000 salary first of all i was two months over there as a scientific officer never got more than 70000 rupees if you eliminate that ta and hra all right i do not know where they are getting the source but i'm guessing that it might be just a clickbait i'm thinking of calling some of my friends who have been working over there for the past 3 years they have even served their bond period i'm pretty sure that even they might not be getting in hand 95000 and a lot of people will be saying that i'm adding medical benefits and all that but no the message that the students are getting is that they are going to get in hand 95000 which is never going to happen all right at least in the first year and definitely not in the training period it's not going to happen because over there there's no ta no hra because you're basically not an employee a lot of people also don't know that in the first year you're just on stipendary basis not on salary okay great moving to the next one so pay attention to this one it is bold anyways allocation of a successful ocas tso to a da unit is carried out based on the da reserves the right to place tsos in any of other units also or atomic energy regulatory board arb 
is also possible so that is another vacancy that was not mentioned over here and i have seen that vacancies comes very frequently from arb a lot of people people prefer it as well because they will be basically responsible for uh reactor getting sanctioned or not they are going to take care if it is any danger to the civilization and all and all that people around them so regulatory the name stands for itself so yeah that is another center and it is having headquarters in mumbai but people get posted in first of all one of my very close friend was posted in rajasthan area for two years two to three years for just training purpose and works over there as well now he got reposted in mumbai you can also get posted in chennai so there are centers multiple places one center is in delhi also but in high demand so the young scientists or scientific officers don't get posted over there but yeah that is also a top priority for a lot of people because you will be basically in the metros so this is a question i know a lot of you guys might be asking is that what if i don't maintain this 50 percent of aggregate marks will i be thrown out that is again so far from my experience what i've seen nobody ever scored less than 50 percent marks i honestly studied kind of the least in my training school but i even scored over there 67 percent is close to that i was the last and you can see the last is 67 the second last was close to 70 percentage so is extremely difficult you'll have to literally not sit an examination for example Gaurav Joshi scored less than 50 percent and he left in just three months from BARC training school so it is not going to be happening guys so don't worry so far I've not seen anyone scoring less than this and even if you do some people fail in some of the subjects what happens is that they can appear in those subjects next year from the BARC training school and uh, just appear in it again and you can pass it next year that's it your degree might be at hold all right guys this was really getting longer than i expected so i got my coffee so we are going to continue now now here here's the thing bond amount is six lakh rupees six lakh seventy eight thousand for ocs people that is basically in one year of training the amount of stipend you'll be paid in 12 months and that is multiplied by two because you will be paid for two years the same stipend if you're going for DGFS and it becomes 13,000, sorry, 13,58,000. If it was 13,000, it would be fun. All right. Anyway, so you cannot leave until uh, unless you have served three years. If you want to leave, you have to pay the bond amount. That's exactly what I did. That is how I left exactly after 14 months. Yeah, 14 months at my time the bond amount was lesser it was 4 lakh 20 thousand because at my time the stipend was less as well only 35 thousand but now they get over 50 thousand every month the bond amount of dgfs follow pursuing mtech and all all right all right all right see the stipend allowance of ocs tso's and dgfs fellows are paid a stipend of rupees 55 thousand per month now one thing about the stipend that you might not be knowing that is stipend has some deductions so during your training i know this for ocs definitely it will not be applicable for dgfs ocs people have to live in training school now have to live in training school they cannot live outside buying their own house or renting and all those things that won't really work you have to stay in training school there's a hostel over there that's where you're going to stay and food also you have to eat in mass so once you get selected they are going to send you a list of things that you'll have to abide by so this will be reduced by somewhere at least seven to eight thousand at least because uh, that will be going for your staying housing and fooding all right what else are there additionally they have been paid one-time book allowance yes that is true back in my time it was only rupees ten thousand now they are getting paid eighteen thousand that is one time so this is basically for buying books and you have to buy books if you don't buy books then you have to return the amount of money so what happened by the end of our training school everyone started ordering all the books from amazon to fill up their ten thousand mark and I'm pretty sure that these people are going to do the same for 18,000. If you don't show them that these are the books that I've bought and they're going to stamp it so that you cannot return it back to Amazon or sell it somewhere, or you can obviously sell it as a second hand. But uh, yeah, you have to buy books to study. All right. Okay. All right. It is mentioned over here that DGFS people would be paid their tuition fees. Obviously, they don't have to pay to IITs. The department is going to take care of them. So here's the thing that makes it pretty obvious that you won't be getting 
95,000 as your salary at least at the entry level so now they are all in a safe zone because they're always saying that you are actually going to start earning that after 10 years now <laughs> so initially this is what you're going to get 56,100 in kind words we say that in hindi 56100 is level 10 pay matrix at entry level engineering services has the same uh, civil services has the same isro has the same drdo at scientist b post at the entry level has the same and this increases after your increment so i got this increment back in isro so after one year you'll get one increment it becomes somewhere like 57,800 that is your basic pay and a lot of people might be confused what is basic pay I've explained in a better manner in life at Istro video go over there and check it out I'm not going to repeat myself I have better things to do like sip my coffee <laughs> so I finally actually found out where the rumor of rupees 95,000 actually started and it started exactly here and it has been spread by department itself no I'm not saying that they are wrong but listen carefully the total monthly emoluments and for people who do not know that that is basically salary i also did not know i just googled it power of google now after with three increments at the time of joining includes a dearness allowance house rent allowance and transport allowance at present mumbai rate will be approximately ninety five thousand. Now I do understand that with time things change but back then as well the initial base pay was 56,100 and Mumbai basically why they are saying it because different cities are divided in India there will be grade A cities, grade B cities, grade C cities so Mumbai, Hyderabad would be a grade A city, Kalpakkam on the other hand would be a grade C city. Mm they are basically going to pay you lesser of hra and ta hra stands for house rent allowance ta stands for traveling allowance traveling it never made sense to me because petrol is of equal cost in mumbai and in kalpakkam house rent allowance makes sense because houses for rent will be cheaper for example if you go to a lower rate city then obviously let us say in Ranchi, you'll be getting the same house for let us say four thousand in bangalore the same house would be of twelve thousand fifteen thousand same like I mean 1 BHK 2 BHK all right so in Mumbai if you are having 56,500 sorry 56,100 and then HRA would be somewhere around 3 to 4 percent and then TA would be close to 7 percent something like that then that will be added up and even when it gets added up it is close to only 80,000 to 85,000 at max in hand if you are in a grade A city if you are in a grade C city then it will be somewhere around 60,000 every month in the joining period and also if you don't take HRA and TA and you live in quarters which is probably what you are going to be doing in the great C cities then you will not be getting anything and 56,100 will be your base pay plus the only thing that you will be getting is dearness allowance DA so that will be somewhere close to 4,000 or 5,000 now here's the thing there's something which is called NPS, New Pension Scheme. And that is just compulsory for all. At least that is what we were told. And then that will eradicate at least 6,000 every month. So I have seen the salary, monthly salary going as low as 52,000 or 54,000. And ask the honestly, ask honestly to the central government employees and you're going to find that. For example, ask a person who is living in Sri Aikota and just joined as a scientist C in ISRO. So, there's a variation so don't always trust this this does not always work and 95,000 is the absolute peak nobody will actually get that much and also they will be adding CHSS card medical health and uh, don't confuse this with your in-hand salary all right even engineering services people get the same and these things are very very true that you will be getting certain allowances after one year of your service like what we call press professional allowances these things you will be getting and the money is huge but you'll have to serve for some amount of time starts happening after generally one year of your service that is one year after your training one year after you have stayed over there as a scientific officer then you start getting and these are heavy itself for example in ISRO senior scientists do get up to like two to three lakh easily every year with these allowances on the other hand these allowances were stopped 
during the covid situation so that is also a variable and it also depends on the research output or the output in general produced by a particular department so iprc will be having different press and uh, let us say lpsc will be having different press or in a similar manner barc will be having different allowance and ig card will be having different allowance specification threshold will get zero increments oh yeah so it depends the increments does matter on your performance in the training school or in this case for the m tech as well i never really cared about that but it does matter and will not be that much i know that toppers of the training school got some extra increments but it will not make that much of a difference like thousands of rupees that's it all right now they are getting into the whole selection process they're going to basically talk about the written test and the interview so let us get into that two-step process basically the written test and the interview the interview will be independent of the written test and the final selection will be based on your interview itself the written test is just a qualifying round the selection ratio would be 1 is to 20 that means if 20 people are called for the interview only one will be selected if there are 50 seats then 50 into 20 you will be having somewhere around yeah 1000 people called for the interview okay so it is kind of official this year that they will be having training school in not only in barc ig car nfc but also in rrcat and there's another one which is amd hyderabad so this is something new dgfs of all the in the select specialization for july 2021 at indian institute of technology bombay delhi kwati kanpur kharagpur madras rurki bhu varanasi NIT Raul Kela, all right. Some of the NITs are also eligible, and Institute of Chemical Technology Mumbai. These will be eligible. On successful completion of OCS and DGFS program, trainee scientific officers and DGFS fellows will be appointed as scientific officers. Yeah, yeah, we know that. All right, moving forward. In the progression, opportunities up to the highest echelons. Whatever that means, you do understand what is the whole placement system. I pretty much explained everything. Yeah, this is important. Some of you guys might be asking questions. Can we go for higher studies as a BARC scientific officer or Department of Atomic Energy scientific officer? Yes, you certainly can go. And this is something that you might not be knowing that that one year training for OCS itself. So we are going to first talk about OCS itself is a half mtech course that means that you have done half of your mtech that is one year and one year right, right after you get posted as a scientific officer c you will be getting an mtech degree in just one year so while working you can pursue your mtech so basically that one year course was your coursework that generally happens in mtech from HBNI, that is Home Yubhava National Institute, it is the institute for giving MTech. Yes, BARC has its own, or Department of Atomic Energy has its own institute of giving masters and PhDs. So you will be doing in just one year. So this saves a lot of time. So people who want to do MTech just for a degree, then you will be doing it the fastest over here. But yes, you don't go outside for IITs and all. Once you are posted as scientific officer, you would rather be posted over there only and you will be continuing your master's. So for people who are from DGFS, they will be going for PhD. So you will be doing your one year coursework again from HBNI and this HBNI is everywhere. At least from Mumbai and Kalpakkam perspective, it is posted. They are both centers in both the places. NFC people generally go to Mumbai or Kalpakkam to do their coursework. So let us say you have to do your PhD, then one year coursework you'll be doing from HPNI and then continuing your research work or thesis work while working as a scientific officer in your department wherever you are posted. All right. Homi Baba National Institute, HBNI are deemed to be university and could also earn them credit towards their MTech, MPhil or PhD program of HBNI DGFS fellows will be will get the opportunity sometime in their career to pursue PhD through HBNI after joining DA, right? So you kind of get the point. Now, when can we do PhD? There's basically a mark of three to five years after which you can start your PhD, but your MTech will be super fast for engineers. 
DAE strives to have a workforce which reflects gender balance and women candidates are encouraged to apply. I do not know what that exactly points at, but we are going to move forward. So basically, there are some training schemes which you will be getting during your work. So for example, over here, you can see that FTRM is for mechanical and chemical engineers. FTRE is for electrical and electronics engineering and there are various over here so during your service you will be getting further trainings which basically happens in uh, research-based organizations that you continue to get your training some people from iits might be joining or senior scientists will be teaching you something like four to five people in a class something like that so you will continue to be trained that is what they are talking about but that is late in your career like at least three four years later you will be getting more and more training. Some of my friends immediately started getting more and more training right after they joined. So that might also happen, but it depends. It depends in which department you are in. For example, you are in heavy water board. Most of the work is focused towards plant. You don't really need more training in that domain, in research domain, then maybe you won't be getting, or let us say you have a maintenance work, then these all things have to be sanctioned like even mtech or psd has to be sanctioned by your boss same goes in isro as well like yes you are eligible for doing masters and in case of isro you can do masters from iits go over there for two two years and just work over there i mean do your research and at the same time get paid your full hand salary that happens in isro but at the same time that sanctioning has to be done by your boss and because of that there is no fixed time where you can start doing that right so it is not sure that you can go after three years or so yeah so this is first about online screening and they are going to do in september 2021 oh we wish that lockdown does not happen but i'm not i'm not saying something which is voodoo bad or something but yes that is entirely possible but yes be ready for that now other than that, we are going to get into GATE score. Now, this is something that I know that they are not going to mention. But generally, what we have seen is that up to rank of 300 in mechanical, people are called. For other branches like electrical and electronics, maybe they are going to stop at 100 rank itself. But it is based on the ratio of how many people they actually want. So let us say that they want 50 people, right? So they are going to have, like, like I said, 10,000 till 10,000 rank or they are going to call a total of 10,000 people for the interview. So somewhere around 500 to 600 they are going to take from online and rest they are going to take from gate. So they kind of equally divide it. But the cutoff generally goes like that only based on rank. All right. So it happens a lot of times that even good gate rankers miss it. So always, always pay attention towards your online examination that is very important but in this case because gate 2000 yeah 2020 and 21 both are eligible so if you have like under 100 you don't need to sit for online examination that is what i would guess obviously most likely but you can't really say anything but yes what i what we have seen so far they they get called for the interviews Cut-off gate scores for screening into the selection interview will be decided only after the online test. Yes, because they are going to find out how many people they are going to take from online examination. And also, this is a question by a lot of you guys that how many seats are there? BARC never actually discloses the seats. It's only after you get the number of people called for the interview that you can guess how many people will be selected this year. That is just divide that with 20. But they never disclose it. Only at the final stage, they are going to show the number of people who are going to get selected for 20 scientific officers. All right. But if you ask the numbers, the minimum that I've seen so far was 35. That was my batch itself, 2017. That was the minimum. But generally, it goes close to 50. Generally, it is on an average. So you can have, expect more than that as well, like 60, 70 and less than that as well. And by the way, I'm talking about mechanical engineering. So it is the maximum. And then other civil engineering, electrical engineering will be having less than that, obviously. Uh, mechanical will be having the maximum number of seats so you can expect somewhere on like 14 15 20 seats in civil engineering electrical electronics same maximum like 20 30 seats this is how it generally goes all right now this is something which i was not also aware of so i'm just going to read it out students graduated or graduating from 
master's degree of University of Mumbai Department of Atomic Energy Center of Excellence in Basic Sciences UMDAE CBS and National Institute of Science Education and Research Nisar Bhuvneshwar in academic year 2019 to 2020 2020 to 2021 and whose cumulative grade performance that is CGPA is greater or equal to 7.5 on a scale of 10 will be directly getting a chance for interview very small fraction of the population but yeah i think that they will be knowing about this as well but you don't need to sit for witness you don't even need to write gate also some of you guys might not be knowing it is independent of gate as well so let us say that you have not appeared in gate at all then you will be able to appear for the interview if you have just qualified the online examination so it is best of two either through gate or through online examination giving gate is not necessary please mind a lot of people ask this question a selection interviews of shortlisted candidates in all disciplines except geology will be conducted at the bias training school mumbai okay so this geology one i'm having a feeling that it is going to happen in this training school that i was not aware of the other training school in hyderabad you remember yeah that one so all right that is one thing that i'm not aware of they are basically saying that all the interviews of all the streams will be going on in bias in mumbai itself only this geo one will be happening in hyderabad yeah outstation traveling will be paid a traveling allowance of ac3 tier that is nice you can ask for a refund of whatever you spent to reach for the interview yeah i never actually did that i paid a lot more than that because no i actually took a three tier itself from delhi to mumbai but then you'll have to prove that you were not in mumbai and that is how it basically goes these are some minor details does not really matter in the grand scheme now final selection is solely on the basis of performance like i said of the interview and subject to medical fitness now this might be a question for a lot of you guys as well like what if i get selected in interview but fail in medical test well you do not become a trained scientific officer in that case and those people who are getting the heart attack let me tell you another fact right now that i have not seen anyone so far getting rejected in the medicals so that is a good news so basically once you get selected in the interview you are selected you are in it does not happen because they are very low criteria when it comes to medical fitness and all it's not in the indian army so you understand okay other opportunities candidates appearing for ocs djfs 2021 may be considered for direct recruitment in ecil and ipr i do not know what is ipr but ecil i know it is in hyderabad now ecil has their own recruitments but uh, i've not seen anyone from training school going to ecil but yeah these are minor things something that might not that is what i'm trying to do over here that trying to explain what generally happens and there are a lot of things written over here that does not really happen for example ucil you might get posted over there as well but in my experience i've never seen anyone getting posted over there in jadugada so by the way it is actually very close to my hometown it is in jharkhand yep i'm from there eligibility criteria now this is a great thing about bias see that eligibility criteria is kind of low like 60% in your btech aggregate always aggregate it's not semester wise just aggregate cgp sorry percentage in my case it was cgp then you'll have to convert it into percentage some colleges have their own conversion ratio some just multiply their cgp by 10 but you'll have to find it out and it should be just above 60% and you're done that is the eligibility criteria and what is the second one Five year integrated M Tech. All right. So if you are going for B Tech plus M Tech or five year, then same eligibility criteria of sixty percentage. Or for all, it is just sixty percentage. This is generalized. It applicants opting to be considered on the basis of GATE score must have a valid GATE twenty twenty. So let us say that you got a call letter through GATE. Let us say you are under whatever is the cut off. Let us say two hundred. and obviously you'll have to have a gate score to prove it that that was your rank so these all will be filled during your uh, during your filling of the form of brc online examination right and uh, what do you do let us say in case that if you are want to opt for gate examination then you still fill the same form and there's a check box over there that you do not want to go for online examination or there's a check box that you do not tick if you don't want to go for online and if you're that confident then you'll only be 
getting but let us say that you did select the check like i want to sit for online examination but you did not actually but you qualify through gate examination or you're eligible or very good gate rank and what happens then then well you scored zero or you failed in brc online examination but you pass through gate and like i said that it is best of two so you'll be getting the interview call letter through your gate examination as simple as that yep talk clears it all i know these questions you're going to ask because i've been guiding a lot of people for the last three four years what was that okay i'm pretty sure that a lot of people will be making fun of my hair because it is out of control today but that is not the matter of interest today let us focus back on further eligibility criteria. those having the qualifying degree in aerospace engineering automobile automotive aeronautical industrial production reliabilities architecture geology biomedical communication informative technology masters of computer care masters of computer application dies die okay they have uh, specified a bunch of things over here petrochemicals plastic paper i'm pretty sure yeah not eligible not eligible so aerospace engineers extremely sorry to you guys i do not know why i am apologizing but yeah you won't be able to fill this form good news for you guys is that you can fill the estro forms so when that comes be ready okay all right but you're not eligible they have mentioned it pretty much clearly over here of all the branches not eligible okay physics discipline same 60 percentage or through gate chemistry same same eligibility criteria exactly the same biosciences exactly the same those having msc with specialization in subjects like fishery horticulture they are not eligible you can go through it or just turn on your screen then you can see it more clearly or uh, if you're just listening to it university will be giving and also some of the universities are not aict approved and uh, some of the universities won't be eligible so you make sure by the way on the day of the interview you will be checked thoroughly whether your university actually falls like i cannot open a university okay ashish ranjan institute of technology and i can start giving like 65 percent everyone so that won't be eligible so you have to check that okay all right now age limit is important over here by the way there is absolutely no reservation for scientific officer post in department of atomic energy so stsc obc no reservation but there's a reservation when it comes to age so general will be eligible only till 26 years as long as i remember like it was on 1st of august that year you should be of 26 years of years of age but now things are changing and cycle of brc training school has been it has been changing so don't know at which particular day uh, let us see it but for obcs they will be eligible till 29 years sts till 31 nice now dependents of those who died in riot of 1984 also till 31 okay they get some reservation as well persons domicile in kashmir division of as well jammu and kashmir state from 1st of january 1980 to 31st 19 again 31 okay physically challenged persons i'm pretty sure it will be people but now we're judging don't know of all the categories are eligible for the age relaxation for 10 years okay so there's some just relaxation when it comes to age for some categories can kind of call reservation but they won't be getting any special quota or seat finally but they're just getting relaxation of age nationality application applicant must be a citizen of india that goes without saying applicants working in central state government units psus aided institutes should produce a no objection certificate now if you're showing that you are working in this organization which is state government or central government or psu and certainly you need an noc from your boss all right so that is something that you have to bring and before the interview they will be checking thoroughly all of these things okay now next application fees is a non-refundable rupees 500 is chargeable from the male applicant oh yeah to general and obc categories women candidates candidates belonging to sc st dependent defense personnel killed in action and physically challenged candidate exempted from the fees all right great i think this is very similar to what gate does 
However, a retention of these candidates in OCAS DGFS program is subjected to mark sheet of their final year, which is to be submitted all right to this till 31st of December 2021. That means that kind of they are going to start the training school in this year itself. How to apply? Only online applications are accepted. Well, candidates are required to visit the website. This all right, great. In the period of July 12, 2021 to August 7th of 2021 and submit the online application by the following instructions. All right, so your last date would be 7th of August and it is already on guys. Go over there, register. I'm going to put a clean link to the registration down in the description box and also as a pinned comment. All right, so these are, I think, the department codes. Yeah, 21 to 29, I think they said. Nuclear engineering is also acceptable. I don't know what this dollar means, but I'm sure that we are going to find out later, very soon. Okay, these are just the code words. And eligible disciplines are mechanical, chemical, civil metallurgy, electrical, nuclear engineering, electronics, fast reactor technology, Fast Reactor Technology, E and M stands for Mechanical, Quality Assurance and Quality Control, Physics, Chemistry, Biosciences, Radiological Safety and Environmental Science and Geology. Related degrees of discipline like Electrical, Electronics and Communication, Electronics and Control are also eligible to apply under the Electronics. Alright, so that clears out. BARC Mumbai since 1957, Disciplines 21, 28 and 41 to 44 like 21 to 28 basically all the disciplines orientation of the training engineering design development and operation maintenance of nuclear reactors research of the frontier areas of basic and engineering sciences ajika kalpakkam is 21 22 25 if i remember mechanical chemical and uh, what is 25 let us see yeah 25 is electronics okay electronics i think started recently in kalpakkam 30 and 31 and uh, they are biosciences oh biosciences was not there radiological sciences so earlier only physics and chemistry was there from the science side but i don't really know if they are going to send anyone over there and uh, 42 we are having chemistry yeah like i said okay 41 42 okay rr cat indoor is 24 25 and 41 i'm pretty sure that physics will be over there 24 electrical 25 electronics and 45 45 is geology all right no no it is 41 physics like i said yeah huge work of physics in our cat indoor now next is nfc hyderabad and it is again going to have mechanical electrical electronics 25 and 32 what is 32 geology probably what is it yeah quality assurance yeah because it is basically industrial training and AMD is 45 geology. Yes. Okay, great. R&D and of the fast breeder reactors, research in the frontier areas of basic. Okay, almost the same. RRCAT is laser, accelerators, plasma. NFC Hyderabad, operation and maintenance and engineering related to nuclear fuel facility and production plant for production of heavy water to support the nuclear power plant heavy water guys who don't know are moderators in first stage reactors all the npcls you see all right great let us move forward now these are the colleges accepted for dgfs all right for doing your masters over there all except ict for mechanical engineering and ict stands for okay over here it is institute of chemical technology okay mechanical engineering student doing from chemical technology does not make sense so they have removed cryogenics except for Khadakpur all except RKL probably stands for Rurki mechanics applied mechanics other than M probably stands for Madras because I'm pretty sure that I'm pretty sure that Madras does not have applied mechanics masters uh, civil engineering uh, all expect Rurki and ICT okay okay these are just accepted otherwise if you're selected through your gate over there you can try and apply for DGFS all right and DGFS spots are very less like two to three maximum so it will depend on your gate rank and where you are selected whether you are going to get a call for dgfs or not so we are almost at the end now this is the important dates important for you guys let us see commencement of online examination that is 12th and then end of application that is 7th of august last date of submission of online application what 
last date of registration okay i think this one would be the last date of submission of fees online examination slot booking okay slot booking so you will be having some slots of examination so brc online examination does not happen only on a single day so it will be having like in a one week period so whichever day is much more comfortable for you you can book the slot but slots go away fast so whenever it opens up you can start booking earlier there used to be slot booking for interviews as well i think that they have removed it from the year of 2019 i guess don't know if they have reintroduced but probably not online examination is going to be on 5th september to 12th september like i said seven days period you can book the time which is perfect for you and also the time also at that particular day a display of candidates shortlisted that will be on 21st september for the written test result pretty quick pretty quick they're in a hurry i guess in just 10 days or less than that they're going to publish the result and then availability based option online application port oh no they have brought back the interview slots that is great so that will start kind of close to 24th of september be fast in that guys because that also wipes away very fast now selection interviews okay they are doing it in october itself like i said there will be very less time for you to prepare i'll be making more videos on the preparation strategy but then again displaying of the candidates who are finally selected uh, it will be on second week of November and let's see when they are going to start last date of selected candidates okay desirous of DGFS to give it it will be third week of November and then declaration of the list of applicants selected for DGFS by 30th of November they are going to probably start the training school from December itself all right guys I think that was pretty pretty clear for you guys I just had to do this once in my life because everything should be clear and I know that this is not a clickbait and also this is not a 10 minute video so a lot of people will not be watching so I don't really care about them I just want to give authentic information should be available online for free and that is why I explained everything that was in my hand that was written over here if you still have some more questions put it down in the comment section for people who are in the hurry i'm going to upload the audio version on the audio platforms as well so that it is easy for you to just listen if you just want to listen i'm pretty sure that most of you guys listen just by walking out or so it has been more than 50 minutes of me just sitting over here so it was long at many points i thought that i should not do it it's getting too long but then again we can just convert it into a momentum podcast it is informative for people who do not have that much information about BARC and all that, at least I can do that much because I know that BARC is a hope for a lot of people who did not do that well in gate examination. Same was the case for me. So I did my best. If you have more questions, please put it down in the comment section of YouTube. I'm going to certainly answer all of them. And maybe if the question is very highly rated, I might make a separate video. If I miss something, I'm extremely sorry. If I made a mistake, extremely sorry. That was not my intention but uh, i'm giving the information from my side of the experience of 14 months that i've had over there that's about it guys adios see you next time till then bye